you're in ninth or 10th grade and you are not a proficient reader, you have been told many, many, many times, possibly every day of your educational life, what you're not good at. Um, they're pretty good, by the way. Ninth and 10th graders are great at listing their deficits to you. I don't want to give them any more ammunition in that effort. And um, I think if kids are sitting in a class where they feel like there's something broken in me or there's some aspect of failure in me, uh, the likelihood that they're going to be brave in that ambiguous space is none. Um, they have no reason to be brave. They've been told that they shouldn't be somehow. And a deficit mindset is a great way to teach a kid to not to try anything um, outlandish or creative or new. What does it mean when you get yelled at at home or something bad happens and then you come to school in that space? What do you think that does to your learning? It interferes with it. It affects it. Is it your fault that it affects it? No. No, it's not. I have a student, Daniel, who is tremendously courageous. He's a young, tall, mixed race young man that already comes with a package of beliefs and biases and, and all the things. He has a very strong sense of his own boundaries, which I believe is a huge asset for him. Um, but if you are a person like a teacher or an administrator who is looking for acquiescence and immediate smiling compliance, um, you may see that as non-compliance um, or disrespect or something like that, whereas um, that could not be farther from the truth. But on top of that, it can talk to almost anyone at any level, at any time, and it's mostly because he has this fantastic way of not judging people and he can just like be receptive to conversation and so using that strength and like calling his attention that strength i said you have this strength and then he's like yeah and i said but you know that and he goes that's because you tell me every day i'm daniel boyd the second i'm named after my dad i want to eventually be a, a lawyer that's my favorite teacher miss daniel like whenever i'm down she was always the first one to bring me up and lift me it's very important to him to feel an emotional connection to his teachers and administrators. He has to trust you um, before he's going to do his best work because, and this is where the deficit mindset definitely came in, I believe, um, is that he was very timid to try new things and to really stretch himself to that rigorous level that um, where he'd have to think in ways that he wasn't used to thinking. She's the type of teacher is like, she comes and she'll talk to you and. Like, even if she knows you understand it, she'll still come to you and make sure, like make sure 100% that you understand. And so she understands that you understand. It's more relaxed and calm. And I find it way more understanding than any other class would be. My dad used to say, if you ever want something out of a child, accuse them of it first. And, um, and I live my whole teaching career this way. Um, so as soon as I see sort of a nugget of um, brilliance in them, they get accused of it a lot. And um, it's reiterated a lot. The minute you say, what's that student's deficit? I immediately think of numbers and data, but that has nothing to do with him as a, as a human being or what he brings to my classroom, the value that he bestows on any group that he's a part of. How you wanna frame your own thoughts in your head um, have a lot to do with how much you get out of a student or how a student feels about you. So I can't control a lot of things, but what I can control is what I'm thinking about a student. I know that student's a great leader. Or I know that student's a great listener. It's like I know that he's gonna listen to me and I know that she's gonna be able to draw and I know that um, he's gonna be able to write all the text out. There's no student in my class that's not accused of something really um, exceptional. But I would say that's probably my most fun way of using a, of a strengths mindset. And, um, and it's probably one of the ways that the kids respond to best. Um, and it's always really sad when one of them will say, no one's ever told me that, or, you know, and you're like, I just want to, I just want you to hear every single day that you do these amazing things and bring all this value to the space that you're in. Anyway, it's, it's the fun part of my job.